Hello everyone, good morning and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Jackie and today I'm going to be taking you through the steps of completing and submitting your VAT return as part of the VAT proficiency badge that we've been running over the past week or so. So I'm going to start off with some housekeeping just in case this is your first webinar. What you'll first of all notice is that you can't speak to the team. Your microphone will be placed on mute and that just means that you can't speak to us directly. But if you do have any questions, please do use the questions panel. To access that, the icon looks like a speech bubble with a question mark in the middle and that will submit your questions across to the team. There is also a handout for today's session, so you can download that using the icon with a folded corner. And we do recommend you download that before the end of the session today. If you have been on previous sessions and you're looking for the handouts for those, then they are available on our Sage Community Hub. So you can find them on there, as well as the recordings of previous sessions as well. We've got Michael and Dabby in the background for any questions that you may have today. And please don't wait till the end. Just submit your questions as and when they come to you, just so that we can make sure we can try and get as many answered as possible on the session today. OK, so I'm just going to quickly go through the contents and then we're going to just talk briefly about the VAT proficiency badge. So today we're talking all about the complete step of the VAT return. So this follows on nicely from Michael's session yesterday afternoon where he did steps one and two. We're going to cover the features of step three. So we're looking at VAT transfer journals and I'm going to show you the manual process of doing that, but also how you can do the automatic postings and show you the benefits of that. Same with the payment or the receipt. I'll show you manual versus automatic. And then we're going to talk about VAT submission. And we'll show you the differences between VAT submission in the UK and in the Republic of Ireland. And if there are any final outstanding questions, then we'll try and tie those up at the end of the session there for you. OK, so I just want to talk about the badge. So we've been running these sessions since the 18th. So that was last Monday. We started a series of seven sessions. We're doing each session twice to give you a choice of dates and times. And we're now on to session three of our second run. So after today, we have three more sessions left. So this is your last opportunity. If this is your first time attending one of the badge webinars, this is your last opportunity to get involved with the badge. So after today, this afternoon, we're going to be looking at running reconciliation reports. And then tomorrow morning, we'll be doing verification checks. And tomorrow afternoon, we finish it up with the top five questions answered. We're including some bonus ones in there as well, because we've had a lot of questions over the last two weeks. We're going to try and highlight some of the key ones over that period. So if this is your first webinar and you want to earn our digital badge, you will need to join us this afternoon and tomorrow at 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. tomorrow afternoon as well to do that. So with the badge, it is a digital badge. It proves your attendance to four out of the seven sessions and they do need to be different topics as well. So we're going to be running the reports next week to see who has achieved the badge and we hope to have the badge out with you by the 12th of April. So please don't chase us before then. We do have a little bit of absence due to holidays, etc. with it being the Easter period. So please do bear with us and we will try and get that out as soon as possible for you. OK, so if you do want to attend the additional sessions, please do get yourself registered. There is a link in the chat, which should again show on the right hand side of your screen. And that links into the article that shows you the upcoming um, sessions, but also recordings of the previous sessions if you have missed those ones out. If you're loving the badge um, scenario, then we are looking to do more badges later on this year. So please do keep an eye out on our webinar page. And we do have a little bit of information a little bit later on around our next badge, which is coming for payroll in April. So we'll tell you more about that towards the end of the session today. OK, so first of all, I am just going to pop a poll on the screen. And what I would like to know is how many of you are doing a UK return? How many of you are doing it from the Republic of Ireland? And how many of you are in the situation where you're actually doing both a UK and Republic of Ireland return? So I am just going to pop the poll on the screen there now. You should see that making its way to you in the next few seconds there. 
And today, our data set is a UK return that I'm going to show you. However, we will be highlighting the differences along the way. And we do have screenshots in the handout that are all Republic of Ireland. So we are trying to make it cater for all of you that are joining us today. That's fab. If the vote's not appearing on your screen, use the questions panel. That's absolutely fine as well. It's great. It just gives us that little bit of insight to see who's joining us from where, making sure that the content is correct for our customers as well. OK, so I always like to wait till I've got around 70 percent of the vote just to make sure I've got a really good group of you contributing there. But we've just hit 80. So I'm just going to close that down and share the poll. So you can see there, majority of you are on the UK return, 92%. We've got a couple in the chat there on the UK return as well. 5% um, on Republic of Ireland, and a few of you are actually having to do both. So for those of you doing both, you, you can imagine why we have to pick to do UK or Ireland return for the demonstrations. It's not as easy as just picking a new company. We do have to change our settings on the PC to Irish settings to get the Ireland VAT return to appear in the software. OK, so what I'm going to do next, then I'm just going to pop back into the slides there. And we're just going to talk about VAT transfer journals. So for this, I'm going to, first of all, bring up a data set so we can see where we are in the journey, first of all, through the VAT return. So I'm just going to pop into this data set here and into my VAT window. So as you can see in here in my VAT window, I've got my previous returns. And I've also done my most recent return, which is up to the end of March. So I am running a little bit ahead of schedule there, but I have done my um, March return. I'm just going to double click this to show you where we're up to. So we've gone through step one, which was prepare. And we've also done step two, which is reconciling the return. So we've actually clicked the reconcile button and everything now has been set in stone in terms of the figures there. So the only way I can undo what I've done so far is to go back to a backup prior to submitting. So what we're going to be looking at today is the three steps on this window and explaining those, because if I'm honest, over the last few years, when we've run VAT return webinars, we kind of skim over these and say you should do them, but we don't really explain what happens if you don't and what they're actually doing in the background. So we're going to go through VAT transfer, submission, which I will cover last, last and also the record payment option. So that's what we're going to be covering today. So if I just pop back to the slides, just want to explain first of all why we need to post these VAT transfer journals and what they actually are. So these VAT transfer journals are used to transfer the values of my sales tax control account and my purchase tax control account, which are 2200 and 2201 by default, and move the balances for that VAT period, whether that's a month or a quarter or a year, depending on your submission frequency, but moving those balances onto the VAT liability. The reason we need to do that is we can't make a payment or a receipt to a control account. So because sales, sales and purchase tax control accounts are termed a control account in the software, we can't make payments to them. So the balance needs to be sat on the VAT liability so we can post our payment to or from HMRC or revenue. What happens if we don't do these VAT transfer journals is it just starts to build up a series of balances. Now, it doesn't have any overall impact because ultimately, these three codes are normally grouped together for reporting purposes on your balance sheet by default. So it's not going to say that your balance sheet is incorrect, but what you might start to see is some really huge balances on these accounts that may start people questioning why is that balance so, so high on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to show you um, two data sets which are identical apart from one has transferred and one hasn't transferred. But just before I do, just to explain what these journals do, because it is slightly different in the Republic of Ireland as it is to the UK. So when we do these journals in the UK, it's quite simple. It will transfer the total VAT sales from um, box one and also box four, total VAT on purchases onto VAT liability. 
in Republic of Ireland, if it's sales tax, it's the amount from the first box on the VAT return, which is unnamed. And if it's purchase tax, it depends whether or not it's a payment or re a reclaim that's due. So if it's a payment to HMRC, it's going to be T2 minus the VAT due on your intra-EU acquisitions or postponed VAT. And if it's a reclaim, it'll be T4 or box T4 on the return plus the VAT charge on supply of goods and services um, if a VAT reclaim is due from the revenue. Okay, so it's slightly different depending on UK and Ireland. A little bit of a tongue twister there to try and get out as well. So I'm just going to show you these because, um, like I said, I've got two data sets to set up to show you this. So bear with me one second. We'll just get the right ones. Okay. So here we are in a data set where we have, if we look in the VAT return window, paid all of our VAT returns. So we've made the payment to HMRC or ROS and recorded that in our accounting software. But what we haven't done is done the journals in the background. So you can see under VAT transferred, they're all indicating not transferred. So if I pop into my nominal codes, what you can see there is over the period of that one year that I've been recording transactions, we've started to build up a little bit of a balance. Now, I don't have a huge number of transactions, so those balances are probably what you would consider quite small. But when we went through making tax digital in the UK and we started to do some health checks on the data, what we found was lots of people were sitting with massive balances on here. Now, they do ultimately sort of almost cancel each other out. So it doesn't really have an impact on the, the balance sheet at all. But it is a good tidy up process to make sure that you don't have massive balances sitting on here. So just to compare that to a data set where we have done exactly the same transactions, but we have done all that transfer journals. I'm just going to pop into a slightly different data set of this one here. And I'm just going to go into the VAT window first. So here, exactly the same returns have been completed. Exactly the transa same transactions have been entered. But in here, you can see not only have I paid HMRC or revenue, I've also completed my VAT transfers. And that means when we go back to nominal codes, the same three nominal codes look a little bit nicer. They don't look as big. They don't look as sort of scary to look at. So we've got nothing outstanding on VAT liability. So it's basically saying at the moment, I don't have anything outstanding on the liability to HMRC or revenue. And I've only got small balances sitting on my sales and purchase tax control accounts. Now, you might think I'm actually doing this for the end of March. Why have I still got a balance on there? And this is a really common question that we do get. Why are balances still on there? Why does it never come back to zero? And that's because your processing is very unlikely to stop at the 31st of March. You likely have future data transactions or you're maybe not looking right on the 31st without having posted anything into the future. So at the moment, these transactions showing as outstanding haven't yet been transferred. So what we're going to do then is we're going to go back into the PowerPoint for just one second there. OK. So I'm just going to show you um, manual posting versus automatic postings. OK, now manual posting is perfectly acceptable. So we may have people on who are doing manual postings and that is fine. You can continue to do so. There's nothing to say that you can't continue. But we do recommend doing the automatic postings because it does take a little bit of the legwork out and it does eliminate human error. OK, so I'm just going to go back into the demonstration there and show you the manual posting first. So. OK, so manual posting would just be done through nominal codes and into journal entry. Now, immediately, the first thing you're greeted with is the posting date. So I would need to change this date to the end of that period. And again, it opens up an area where people could tend to miss something out there. So whenever I'm posting journals, unfortunately, I do tend to miss the posting date and end up posting with the incorrect date on there. 
But then what we need to do is a set of four journals, okay, four journals to clear those balances down and move on to the VAT liability. So what that means is I've got four lines to complete in here. Now again, the more I've got to complete in here, the more I'm opening myself up to my own human error there. So I would have to select my sales tax control account first. And then I need to remember, do I need to debit the account or do I need to credit the account? So again, this again opens up more room for error. So I can start entering them from here. It'll take a little bit longer than it would do if we were using the VAT transfer wizard. Now, one feature you do have, I'm just going to pop this one in just so you can see, I'd need to credit. But one feature you do have if you're using standard or professional is the memorize and recall option. So if you do enter this once, you can then memorize it so it will bring it back next time for you. And what, all you would need to do is change the values to reflect the VAT return. So unfortunately, if you're on essentials, you won't have this feature. But again, I just want to show any quick fixes I can along the way. So rather than posting manually, uh, what I could do is if I've memorized it, so I can memorize it here, give it a file name and description, which I'm not just going to do because I have created one earlier. But I can then come in and recall. So I'm going to say no to saving changes because I'm re going to recall the one that I've created previously and load. And as you can see here, I've created the, the journal. I've got the debits and the credits in the right place. And what I would just need to do is make sure that matches each month to my VAT return. So that's one way of doing it. OK. The other way you can do this, if you pop into the VAT return, is we've got the automatic feature. So if you pop into here, we've got the post journal feature. Now, automatically, this picks up the end of the VAT period. So already my incorrect date has been removed. And if I click post journal at the click of a button, that transfers everything for me. So I don't need to worry about where to debit, where to credit, making sure that I've got the right nominal codes because clicking that button has taken care of that for me. So if I just close down and pop into transactions, you can see there at the bottom, I've got my four journals that it has posted for me. What, what it also does is it links into the VAT return by highlighting the number there as well. So that's VAT return number five. It's got that in the reference there. So that's the VAT transfer journals. So like I say, some of you might be doing them manually. That's absolutely fine. You can continue to do so. That's no problem at all. So next, what we're going to look at is the payment option. OK, so that's this one down here. So again, at some point, you'll need to record your payment to or from HMRC and revenue. Now, again, this can be done manually. You can do this through the banking feature. So we've got the option for bank and then bank payment or bank receipt, depending on whether it's money to or from revenue. However, again, what we would recommend is where you can is to use the VAT return feature to do this. Now, it might be you're not paying them for another sort of six weeks or so. And that's fine. You can come back in at any point and record your payment as and when you have made that payment. Now, what's great here is, again, it picks up your default bank. You do need to pop your date in because your date might be different to the last day of your VAT period. And then the amount is automatically picked up as the amount due to or from HMRC. What's also great is it recognises if it's a refund, it would actually say record receipt here rather than a bank payment. And it would actually say post bank receipt rather than bank payment here too. Now, if you have marked it as paid outside of this window and you've done it manually, you can also tick to say it's paid by just ticking the box here. So again, it is up to you. It's a choice that you wish, which one you wish to do, which one makes your life easier. But again, try and rule out where the, the human error can come into it. So I always recommend if you can do it from this window and everything's taken care of. 
I'm going to pause bank payment and close. And again, if we pop into transactions there, we now have the bank payment to to. 2202 and if we wanted to we could have popped a reference in to reference the, the um, VAT return. So great opportunity now to get your questions across if there's any questions there regarding what we've covered so far just before we move on to submission there. Just a reminder as well the journals that you're posting and the payment would all be on a T9 because all you're doing is moving VAT from one location to another and then recording the payment to HMRC. So there isn't any VAT on top of that because you don't pay VAT on VAT. So remember to use a T9 if you are doing them manually so they don't get picked up on the next return for you. Okay, so what we're going to look at next is VAT submission there. So we're just going to talk about the differences in VAT submission in both the UK and for Ireland. So this is where it does differ. Okay, so VAT payment and VAT transfer journals are very, very similar in the UK and Ireland, apart from which boxes are impacted on the return. Submitting in the UK, however, changed a few years ago under making tax digital. So you now need to submit your make, sorry your VAT return via making tax digital submission. And that means in the UK, it will submit your data straight from your software across to the HMRC gateway on your behalf. So you don't need to come out of your software, calculate your figures and then pop them in manually as many used to prior to making tax digital. So what you need to do, first of all, if it's your first VAT return, is switch it on. And if it's not your first VAT return, but you're not sure, you can also check to see whether or not this has been switched on. So a quick question there has just come through that I'm just going to cover there of what happens if I enter the payment through the bank and enter the payment manually on the VAT return form. Will that appear twice? So yes, it will. So make sure if you're going to commit to one, you just use one of those features. Don't use both of them. OK. Right. OK, so I'm just going to pop into my demonstration again. And what I'm just going to do is show you where you can switch on making tax digital or you can check whether or not you're using that. So I'm going to pop into settings and into company preferences. And within here, we have the VAT tab. Just once my password first. So in VAT, you can see if you're in a UK company, you should have this option to enable making tax digital for VAT submissions. So you do need to make sure that there's a tick box in there. And in addition, you also need to make sure that you've got your VAT registration number entered into this box here. This will mean when you go to the gateway, it's checking those data details for you. But also if you're creating invoices, it will pull that VAT registration across for you on certain layouts. So make sure you've got the tick box there and then you can submit when you go into the VAT return using, bring this back up, the option to submit online here. And that will start to send the information directly for your software. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show a quick video which shows you we're making tax digital submission. So bear in mind, this is UK only, and I'm just going to make sure it is going to work. because We have had some issues with our videos lately. Some of them tend to play and some don't, but I am hoping today's will play. If not, we do have a link to, um, to this um, recording that you could follow up afterwards if you wish to follow that up. So bear with me. We'll just try and see if this video will work for us. There. It's just a few minutes long. In this demonstration, we're going to show you the steps to submit your VAT return online. We join the demonstration where we're on step three of the VAT return, so it's already been reconciled and we're ready to submit it online. So on the right hand side, we click Submit Online. The online submission wizard appears and you click Next. Ensure that the correct company name and VAT registration number appears and then click Next. 
an authority page appears and if you scroll down to the bottom you can then click continue you're then prompted to sign in with your government gateway user ID and password once entered click sign in you then click grant authority You'll then be prompted to choose your period and it should default to the correct one. Just make sure this is correct and then select the checkbox to say that you agree to the following HMRC declaration and then click Submit to HMRC. Once completed, a congratulations message appears indicating you successfully submitted your VAT return to HMRC. You click Close. You then return to the VAT return and as you can see the VAT return is now flagged as being submitted. Okay, so that was just an example of a making tax digital submission. Bear in mind yours might look slightly different, but that is what the process should potentially look like if you're submitting from your software in the UK under making tax digital rules. So that unfortunately isn't available just yet in the Republic of Ireland. So the quick question they're asking, um, is this available only in the UK? Yes, that is UK only at the moment. So in Republic of Ireland, it is slightly different and it's along the lines of what we had prior to making tax digital in the UK. So in Republic of Ireland, what we have is the option to download a file and this file is created automatically for you when you click the reconcile button. So the file will be generated and located in a folder alongside your data and all you have here is the option to open the folder download the XML file and what you will need to do is log into your ROS um, or your revenue online services and upload that document there. What you can do is once you've submitted is tick the box to say Mark has submitted and then when you're looking at your VAT return list when you're trying to check which ones have been submitted it will show a yes for those ones as submitted there. In the UK, if you do do a submission for making tax digital rules, what you will find is rather than what we can see here, this wording here, is you will have something called a correlation ID. And that is basically your receipt number from HMRC to confirm that that submission has gone through successfully. OK, so just going to have a quick look at questions before we summarise there, just see if I can pick any up there. So a quick question there is, can we post the journal and submit online uh, but pay on a later date before the due date? So absolutely, that's the whole purpose of this um, part of the VAT return here. You might not be ready immediately to do your VAT transfer. You might want to do it later on for some reason. But you can come in, you can do a transfer then close out and then come back to do your submission at a later point. So you might do your transfer and your submission immediately using these options here, but you might not be ready to pay just yet. All you need to do is if you want to use the wizard to do so, is just come back into this window at the later point, make sure the date is correct, and then click to make the payment there. So all three of those, these can be sort of revisited at a later point. So if you're doing a VAT return, it may have been that it's taken some time to get through steps one and two. You've clicked reconcile and if you're honest, that might be it for the day. <laughs> that might be more than enough. So yes, you can come back to these at a later point. That's the beauty of the VAT returns there. OK, so I'm just going to pop back on to summary. So again, please do keep your questions coming there. We've got um, Abby and Michael on hand there, pretty much on top of them. So if you are thinking about getting a question across, please do. Um, we've got some time remaining for any questions there for you. So in summary, first of all, my key thing to take away from anything to do with VAT is before you log into the VAT return window is to take a backup. If you click reconcile an error, we don't have an option to undo a VAT return. 
it's you normally go back to the backup and if you've done processing since your last backup that could mean there's an element of reprocessing so do make sure even if you're just logging into the VAT return just have a look at the figures that you do take that back up first of all it's very easily done to click on reconcile in error so use the VAT transfer wizard and that will transfer the sales and purchase tax values across to the VAT liability for you it will take care of it for you if you haven't done VAT um, transfers before you can go back through previous returns and catch up with them so you can go back and transfer them that's no problem at all if you don't do VAT transfer um, wizard it, it's not going to cause an issue with your report but you are just going to see those balances start to really build up and it might cause a query with your accountant if you use the wizards it does make life a bit easier okay so particularly if you're not confident with journals you don't have to remember where where to credit where to debit what date to use what nominal codes to use it can get a little bit overwhelming so use the VAT wizard if you're not confident with that saying that if you're using the manual process that is okay too so don't feel you've got to change if you're quite happy with what you're doing that's fine the post payment or receipt option recognizes whether it's a payment or a refund that's required so it's clever enough to recognize it's a payment required this time i'll post a bank payment so again it's very easy if you're processing manually to open up the wrong option and post it the wrong way around your uk submissions are sent digitally direct from the software so use that submissions option and just make sure you get that correlation id and then in the republic of ireland you'll have the XML file which is created when you click on reconcile. All you need to do is download that and upload to revenue and once you've done so you can tick the box to mark as submitted. Okay so time for any remaining questions that you may have today so please do get them across. Um, we do have some time so we will hang on while we do that but in the meantime I do just want to talk about um, the webinars that we've got continuing on but also badging in general so just remember if you're here today and it's your first one of the badging series we only have three sessions left and you do need to attend four in order to obtain your badge so this afternoon we're going to be looking at running reports for reconciliation which is session six and tomorrow exploring VAT verification checks and also the top five questions answered if you like a badge and you are running payroll or you have a colleague who does payroll then please do have a look at our spring clean badge which is coming in april and for this i've just got a short video that i'm just going to play from duncan and alice who work on the payroll team and they are just going to briefly talk to you about the spring clean badge while we just have a look at those final questions there so again fingers crossed this video is going to work it worked just before we ran the session today so we will just double check and we'll be back with you in less than a minute there hello i'm duncan and i'm alice we do the sage 50 payroll webinars and we're excited to tell you about our upcoming payroll spring clean badge this april we're running five webinars Spring Clean Your Payroll Minimum Wage Check Online Payslips HMRC Secure Mailbox and Report Favourites and Selections It's the perfect time to refresh your payroll skills. Not only do you have the opportunity to ask your questions live on the webinar, but also if you attend three out of the five webinars, you can earn this free digital badge. If you'd like to know more, head to sage.co.uk slash webinars. Select Sage 50 Payroll and register now. We'll see you there. Okay, so that was just about the spring clean webinars there. I'm just busy popping the link there in the chat for you. So if you do want to join those, I have just popped them in the chat box. So please do have a look at those and get yourself registered. And for th those sessions, it's three of the sessions that you need to attend in order to obtain that badge there. 
OK, so just going to cover a quick couple of questions there. First of all, one is around having difficulty printing the handout. Is there any, is it available after the session? So yes, we do have it available on our community hub. So I'm not sure if you've used community hub before, but our community hub is basically our area where you can submit questions, you can speak to your peers, but you can also submit ideas for your software as well. So it's a really good place to get the hang, hang of using and sort of periodically checking in on. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to share the, this in your answer there. I'm going to pop the link across. I think, in fact, I think um, Abby may have popped that on, but I'm going to pop the Community Hub link in the chat there. Um, and this allows you to view our recordings, but also the handout as well. So I've just popped a little link in there into the chat there as well for you. So if you're wanting to catch up on recordings or any of the handouts, there's more information on there as well. But if you do have a request for a feature or a change in the software, that's also a great place to go because you can submit an idea. Um, and that comes on to my next question there, which is, I think is a really good question. And this would be a really good idea to submit. Um, and this is, I do an annual return, but I pay an estimated di um, direct debit. When I do the VAT return, it doesn't pick up the payments already made. Is there a way of getting these payments entered into um, the VAT return so it can work out what's actually left to pay or receive? Unfortunately not at the moment. It doesn't pick up anything you've previously paid. It just looks at the return it's got in hand at the moment and does that so in your case it would be a manual process and then ticking what um ticking to mark has paid but i think that's a really valid point there because lots of people are on direct debit so maybe one to submit as an idea there okay another question there do you have to attend sessions in numerical order no we haven't even run them in numerical order to be honest so you don't have to run them in a particular order the, the idea around this was we were going to provide seven sessions and you could dip into the four that were most relevant to you if you want you can attend all seven we'd absolutely love to see you on all seven but you don't have to do them in order we're certainly not going to be looking at which order you've um, attended them in so just turn up to um, the four that are most relevant to yourself so no problem if you haven't attended one or two okay so I think we're almost on top of the questions. We do have a few more minutes though, so I am going to give you the opportunity to pop any final questions you've got through to us rather than ending early. So in the meantime, I'm just going to pop us on mute just so we can see if there's any final questions on their way over. Um, if you are leaving us, thank you very much for joining us. Remember, we're back at 2 p.m. today and again at 11 and 2 p.m. tomorrow. In the meantime, though, if you are leaving, thank you very much. And we'll pop on mute until we end the session today. OK, I was going to, but there's one there that just come through. That's a really good one for me to demonstrate, actually. So I'm going to start talking again. So what I'm going to do is pop back into my data set. A quick question has just come through there. Um, and we always talk about default nominal codes. So I'm just going to share my screen again. There we go. So majority of people will be using the defaults, but not everyone is. So the question that has come through is, I don't see nominal code 2200. So most people will be using it as sales tax, but not everyone will. To check this in your data, you can go into settings and then control accounts. And this shows you all of your control accounts in the software. So what you'll be looking for is VAT on sales. Now, as you can see, mine showing is 2200, but yours might be showing is something else. And that means my handout today, you'll just need to sort of um, pop in your nominal codes instead when you're looking at the handout there. But this is where you can see all of the control accounts in the software and what you've got assigned. Now, mine here at the moment show the defaults because I haven't made any changes to this. And if yours are different, it's not to say that's wrong. It's just you might have a slightly different nominal structure set up on your data set. OK, 
lovely comment there. Thank you very much for the SAGE team for organising the series. Um, it's been really quite helpful. We've had some lovely feedback from people and we really do appreciate any feedback um, either way. So anything you've got to say to us, please do use the survey at the end of the session just to um, send over your comments. We really do appreciate it because we can only improve with your comments as well. OK, I am going to pop on mute now because um, we've got a few more moments. So any final questions, please do get them across just before we end the session there. Okay, so I think we're pretty much on top of the questions. One final question did come through then. I just want to sort of try and give an answer to this one. It was just around part payments manually posted direct to the VAT liability. So yes, if you do have um, a part payment that you're making, then you would do that manually. Um, if you were to record it in the VAT return and it marked it as paid, then obviously you wouldn't be looking at it to see that it's an outstanding balance. So we would recommend you do that as a manual 
um, payment. Okay, so I think we're going to look to end the session there. So thank you everyone for joining us today. We really do appreciate you joining us on these sessions. Beyond this week, we're continuing. Next week, we're looking at bank feeds. So if you're looking at trying to streamline your processing a bit more, join us for our bank feed sessions and also running year end as well. Okay, so for, for today that's it we'll see you this afternoon so take care everyone stay safe and we'll see you again very soon